still going co-ed. Our on the scene reporter Jack Moncton is reporting at Mr Gay's office. This is an exclusive report. Good afternoon sir, how are you? I'm very good, thank you Jack, how are you? Very good. We're just here to ask you a few questions about Huntley doing co-ed. Fantastic, I look forward to that. Okay, we shall start. Are you excited about Huntley going co-ed? I am Jack, I'm really excited about Huntley going co-ed. I've been working towards this for the last 14 months. So uh, we've got some exciting times ahead of us. So, yeah, I am looking forward to it. Yeah. Do you think this will help our school? I do, Jack, for a, for a number of reasons, really. Um, you know, one with, with the girls in the school, we're, we're going to be doing uh, some building for the school. So the, we'll be working on the dormitories first of all. We're going to build, um, obviously, a girls' dormitory uh, within our existing footprint. Uh, but we're also, as we do that, we're going to put in new showers for the boys and things like that as well. So it won't be just the girls that, that get the benefit from it, it'll be all the boarders will get the benefit from having the, the revamped of the dormitory block. So, so that's, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah. Will you make any changes on behaviour, mottos, badges? That's a good, really good question. It's one of those ones that uh, I think a lot of the boys are quite concerned about, you know. Uh, Will there be a head boy? Will there be a head girl? Uh, all of those sorts of things are uh, legitimate sort of uh, concerns from the boys. And so let me put your mind at ease. We, we are going to have a head boy and head girl eventually. And we're going to look at it for, for next year. Um, and if we have an outstanding girl, we may appoint a head girl throughout the year. Uh, but at this stage, we will just be starting off with a, with a head boy. The badge system will be exactly as it always has been. Um, we will appoint our gold badges as we always do, and our red badges and our black badges as well. Uh, and some girls will become uh, badges throughout the year, just just like the boys do. Um, as far as things like um, your, your your sort of headmaster's colours, uh, speech awards, and all those sorts of things, yes, the girls will have have those awards just like you. Because the girls will be in the same, basically the same uniform as the boys, uh, they'll be able to get themselves headmasters, colours, ties, and things like that as well. So, so there will be no changes there. Cool. Do you think that the boys that will be here next year will be looking forward to it? I think they will. I think it'll be an exciting time in, in, in developing, um, having the girls come into that environment. So. The boys, especially the year eight boys that are coming through for next year, uh, they've got a really uh, a big responsibility, if you like, to help us push this through and make it a real successful event for the, for the uh, boys as well as the girls. Will there be single gender classes as well as dorms? Are we going to have the mix or how's it going to work? Okay, so that, that will actually depend on, on the numbers that, that enrol. Uh, at the moment, we've had higher than expected enrolments from the girls. So, so that could push us into a situation where we, we go co-ed all the way through. Uh, but we could also be in the situation where we have, say, you know, 10 girls in one classroom with 10 boys, and then perhaps another classroom uh, with just boys. Uh, but it's too early to say really how that's going to pan out. But, so there is the possibility of having a single sex class of boys still uh, next year, but long term we'll be looking to go fully co-ed right the way through. And if the numbers increase like we are, are seeing at the moment, then we'll probably go, be able to go co-ed all the way through straight away. What sports will they do? Like, will they have new sports? Will they be... Okay, so if you look at our sports that we currently do, uh, you, you've got your rugby, um, and there may be the odd girl that wants to play rugby, which is fine, but generally soccer and hockey, um, girls can play that and they can just slot into our existing team structure. Uh, we are looking at creating a netball side, okay, so that will be a bit different. Uh, in the summer, they can play cricket, they can play tennis, and they can play softball. So, as far as the sports goes, the only real sport that we're going to have to add is um, netball, really. We're all very excited. This was Jack Mountain reporting for, for Hunting News.
Thank you very much, Jack, for spending the time with me today. Oh, thank you, sir. And a big bit different, eh? She'll never get it lift away. Oh, I don't do anything, anything, anything. Don't come to anything. No one but Nalini. The new insider takes seven minutes. Now for the sport. A number of Huntley teams have been out playing sport this week. Let's have a look at those interviews. Today we're here with the newly announced captain of football, Rob Fraser, and the vice captain, Jake Hobbs. How do you think the teams are going? Really well. The firsts are doing great, but especially the seconds. What has been your best match this season? Probably the first one when we won 18-1. I would agree with that. Who's the top goal scorer so far? Um, that would have to be Rourke from the first match. But you're coming second, Jake. You're only two goals behind me. How's the feeling towards your prep match against Southall next week? Really positive. I hope we score a couple of goals in the first half. Yeah, it's a good lead up. What do you think the team needs to work on? Definitely our defence. Our attack's coming along pretty good, so our, it would need to be our defence. Thanks, boys. This is Brennan Couchman reporting for Huntley News with the latest from the football. Today we are here with Oliver O'Leary, who has just been made captain of the first 15. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, how do you feel the season is going? I think it's going pretty well. What has been the best game so far? Third game when we beat our main rival in the women in the competition, 43-0. How's the feeling towards your first prep match against Savile? Definitely positive. What do you need to work on? I reckon we need to work on a bit more defence. How are you? How are the other team, company teams going? Are they going pretty well with a few losses and a few wins? Thanks, Ollie. This is Ben Strag reporting for Huntley News with the latest from the rugby. Hi there. This is Logan Law from the seconds of hockey and Ethan Gillespie from the first of hockey. Hi, boys. Ethan, how the first are playing? Well, we're going quite well. What's been the best game for the team? It would have to be our game against Ross Alpha. We won 1-0. It was a tight game. Right. Who's the top goal scorer? It would have to be Jake Hewitt. He scored two. What do you feel the team needs to work on? Just getting down low and tackling. Yeah. Now Logan Law. Last week, the seconds played St. George's. How did you do? Oh, we did good on the attacking and the marking wasn't that good. Is there anything you can work on? Um, our marking we need to work on a bit. Okay. You're both going to Southall next week. What's the best part of prep games? Um, it would have to be the the litting experience yeah. with other boys. Okay. Lastly, how are the thirds playing? They're going quite well. They're picking up lots of new skills that none of them would have known before. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Good luck on your game on First in Southall and your other weekly games. This is Rowan Waddle on Huntley no News. And now for the weather. Up to you, Geordie. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're now looking down to Dunedin. It's looking beautiful with the D-U-N-E-D-I-N. Man, that's hard to spell. Now we're looking down to Queenstown with a minus 500. Damn, that would be chilly. Now looking to Christchurch, looking a little bit shaky. And then we're looking all the way up to Auckland with a minus plus 100. Damn, it's hotter than my hair. And now back to Digby and Jack. Thanks for the weather, Geordie. Ripple, gives you wins. <clears throat> He's good at making coffee, but how good is he at plumbing? Mrs. Stewart, who organised the service. 
This is Stuart. Why is it so important for Huntley School to commemorate Anzac Day? Well, that's because so many old boys died. 37 in the First World War and about the same number in the Second World War. We learned and saw pictures of the old boys who had gone off to war. How did you find out about these boys? Well, for the First World War boys, it was really quite tricky because there were no records at school because the First World War was from 1914 to 1918 and the school magazine started in 1921. So I had to do a lot of research through National Archives. And then for the Second World War, it was a bit easier because we had obituaries in the school magazine. The choir sounded beautiful on the day. Why did you choose that particular anthem? Because it was written by a New Zealander and it involved the New Zealand National Anthem. And it had a lot of sentiments that we like to um, display at school. This is Levi Walston reporting at Huntley School. With the now I'll leave you with some music from the Huntley School Jazz Band. And that's us for this week. From Huntley School News Team, I'm Jake. And I'm Digby. Good night. Good night. <laughs>